All right, uh, once more, <coughs> thank you very much uh, for joining us here at uh, the Premier Soccer League headquarters. Uh, we are previewing the MTN 8, and uh, this will be the quarterfinal match, the fourth quarterfinal match of the weekend. Mamelodi Sundowns coming up against Super Sport United, and uh, it is at the Tax Stadium on Sunday. Six o'clock is the kickoff time. Coach Rani Mukwena. Home team coach joins me here, and uh, coach, maybe just opening remarks. You know your thoughts about Super Sport United, uh, MTN8, uh, quarter final uh, fixture, and you are the defending champions uh, after all. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. Thanks, uh, Fatu. Good afternoon to members of the media. Uh, yeah, it promises to be a very interesting game. Uh, of course, they've also got that cup pedigree, and we we well aware of that. Um, very very good side with a very experienced coach. Uh, difficult to to score. They don't give you a lot of big chances. Go to TS Galaxy. Go to Orlando Pirates. Go to Richards Bay. Um, they score. Uh, they play very, very aggressive percentage football. They, they, they've got a good striker in uh, Robla, and then it depends on who they partner him with. If it's, uh, if it's, um, El Sibagnoni played the last game. He's not going to play the next match, and uh, Obugun Goma played as a ten, just slightly behind. Or they go with uh, Gabuza, who came on as a sub and did very, very well against Pirates. Uh, and they play with that front two, or maybe even Kapani Lunga, uh, Lungu, uh, who I see in the in last night's match played as a wing back, and maybe they could still bring Osian Trapo back to wing back, and uh, and then move. Uh, Move Lungo up front, so very difficult team. Good, very strong three centre backs with Tyson, Luke Fluis, and uh, Titlock were three strong midfielders. Uh, so it's going to be a very difficult match for us. Thank you, coach. Questions from the floor. Let's start with where's the microphone? Okay, let's start with uh, Pendulo here. <coughs> hey, coach. John Pendulo. Um, coach. Um, Looking at your squad depth and going into this weekend encounter, uh, do we then uh, get to see those players in San Jose who get a game time um, getting off the start? Can you see what's going on? No, well, we don't know. Uh, today we had uh, we had a, an off day uh, following yesterday's uh, match, so so we still have to tick the boxes, uh, see the players at training, see the level of of uh, readiness, and uh, and then also try to to give them a debrief on 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 how Super Sport play. And uh, and that's part of the preparation. And then as soon as we know what's happening, that we do an audit with regards to injuries and and and, and the likes. So in terms of starting lineup, um, I'm not sure there'll be a lot of rotation. I don't think so. But we don't rotate anyway. <laughs> we we try to put the best players on the pitch because we've got the responsibility of winning the match. So uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, Coach Mazola. You up next. I've noted you, Karam. Coach, uh, uh, Coach Gavin is uh, feel, feels like he's crippled by the agreement between the two clubs. He doesn't have Gossi, doesn't have uh, Grant, uh, Tabang. Do you sympathize as a colleague or you're just wearing your sundowns hat and that's just how the deal was done? Yeah, that was just how the deal was done and I wasn't involved in that. So it's very difficult to 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 sympathize i like gavin a lot i've got a very very soft spot for gavin and a lot of people see what they see but i've spent a lot of time with him off of the cameras in studio doing analysis i've spent a lot of time with him uh, in the streets uh, and i can tell you that uh, the person that you see Sometimes in the cameras is not the person that you you meet. So I've got very 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 big respect for for Kevin Hunt, 
and um, but he's he's an old campaigner, very experienced campaigner who knows how to go around these things, and 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 for sure he will have he will have solutions for he's got he's got good players uh, in his team, and I, I'm sure he'll find the right solutions for for the predicament. Karabu. Good afternoon, Coach. Sure, Karabu. I, th I think uh, it's a derby, it's a local derby, and yeah. breaking rights are on the table here. Uh, as I always ask the Coach, uh, one of the most important aspects is to really focus on the match and not the occasion. Yeah. And once again, uh, the same question arises, and uh, is there anything that you guys, well, the three coaches, you guys focus on in terms of the mentality to help the players to focus on the match and not play, you know, what is what is at stake here? Thank you. Thanks, Karabo. Well, look, the, the players have been in these situations so many times already. They've got the experience and uh, I always say to you guys that the game belongs to the players and therefore the responsibility of, of putting in a very good performance is, 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 is up to the players. And they know that. They've got the experience of performing in games like this uh, and, and I'm sure we will give a very good performance on Sunday. Lorenz, not that you must say. Coach Lorenz, if I need to speak up. So sure, Lorenz. Follow up on that loan question. One of the uh, gripes that you guys possibly had in the Champions League was saying that there's not enough competitiveness in the league. So, why as a club do you cripple another team after having signed some of their best players already? Yeah, look, it's, uh, this 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 thing it doesn't start now. It's been an ongoing situation with Mamelodi Sundowns, and I think I think the clubs also have uh, the right to to enter in these negotiations and enter into these discussions with the club. And it is their prerogative to then decide to not make the agreement. And if the clubs make the agreement. And then thereafter may feel as if they are being crippled, then no one has forced them to sign these agreements. I, I know how experienced the, the super sport management is. I mean, uh, Stan is someone that I've also got huge respect for. And he knows exactly how to run his club. Who are we to sit here and say how uh, super sport might go, must go into the legalities of of these issues, but as I said, at the end of the day, is uh, people do what's the best for them. Our focus, our focus is on coaching the team, putting a good structure on the team, and making sure that we have the best squad on the pitch. Uh, and and all the other issues for me are, are very difficult to comment on because I love just to speak about football, you know, and and all these these issues that involve legalities, administrative elements. Uh, I always say now this season that I might not be the right person to ask these questions. Alright, Matlazi, up next. Good uh, afternoon, Coach. Sure, Matlazi. Just out of interest, is um, Ronan your, your, your number one or first choice goalkeeper now? And uh, also, how does guys like Kennedy, Dennis, and uh, uh, the other guy, Peterson, how, how, how do they feel about this? You know, no, well, there's, uh, imagine the, the level of disrespect if we were to just say Ronwin must walk into the team. Uh, I mean, you've got probably uh, one of the best, if not two of the best and most recognized goalkeepers on the continent in Kennedy and Dennis. Uh, what helps us at Mamelodi Sundowns is competition and that's football. Football is competition, is two teams against each other for 90 minutes. But that also is transmitted into competition for places in the team, competition at training for, for people to start. And, and, and Ronwin knows, like Dennis knows and like Kennedy knows, that uh, we've all got to fight for our positions and we've all got to give the best that we can when given the opportunity. And therefore, uh, I don't think we are in that space where we've got uh, someone who's a guaranteed starter. You know, it's. Uh, is, is, is what we see, what we feel, and, and, and at the time, who puts up their hand. And at the moment, Ronwen has, has done exceptionally well under the circumstances. Incredible pressure on him to be able to come in and perform as Bafana's number one and try to keep his position as the national team's goalkeeper. But that means he's got to play at sundowns. And also, he came knowing that he's got to compete against 
some of the country's best goalkeepers and unfortunately for the goalkeepers only one can play uh, unlike many of the infield positions where if you competing in central midfield for an example you there's various other positions that you can participate in particularly if you've got a lot of flexibility look at Tapelo, look at Debza look at Neo, they've played in various positions uh, this season but with the goalkeepers it's extremely difficult but but Ronwin knows that he's got to compete. He's got to compete by giving his best every single day at training, every single day in the matches. Uh, because not only do you have uh, very talented goalkeepers in that space, but you've also got very good human beings who who always, when called upon. I mean, I mean, uh, last season when we called upon Kennedy against Al Ahly. Uh, he was phenomenal. In fact, you can go the last five, six, seven seasons maybe when Kennedy has had to come in and, and, and do the job for Sundowns, he's been exceptional. And therefore, to to relegate any of them into second choice or third choice would be extremely disrespectful and we don't operate in that space. We, Of course, sometimes we are unfair, but we try our level best to make sure that we, we give um, everybody an equal opportunity to compete and, and try to be in the team. Alright, uh, I've noted we still have a lot of hands. Uh, Kentani will be up next, followed by Tepo, Velile, we've got Tiseto. Colin, I've also noted you. Thank you, Katu. Uh, Coach uh, Kentani from Asandona. You've often said this season that um, your, your lineups are dictated by the controversy. And in relation to what you just said now, um, we've often seen it at the, since the beginning of the season in Cape Town that your, actually your, your back five hasn't changed and you've often seen that during half time you see that he's waiting for him when talking to him when talking yeah. to him. Same with Lyle and, and Zeda. Same with uh, Tapelo. Uh, <coughs> Modal. Uh, 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 how do these type of situations help you? Um, and also how, how, do, how do you keep the competitive edge alive uh, even when these, these players uh, seem to to be working with each other instead of against each other. Yeah, thanks, Kent. Well, look, the, at the end, again, I say the game belongs to the players. I mean, look at uh, what helps us a lot is that we've got very good human beings in the squad. You, you do not become selfless if you don't have the ability to think not about yourself and think more about the team. That is the number one requirement of being at Mamelodi Sundowns is that you put the team first. And putting the team first, sometimes um, investing your interests in, in, in the team above your own. And I think the message is shown not just through the players, but through what we try to do as the coaches, through the club management. And unfortunately, our leadership is uh, a leadership that demonstrates through daily actions how they always give back to to society, give back to 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 people in general, and and therefore. When you do that, you already demonstrate the willingness to be selfless and uh, part and parcel of, of being at Mama Lodi Sundowns is to try to continue that. And that is a responsibility that's heavily on our shoulders as the coaches. That is a responsibility that's, that the players have to carry through on, on, on the pitch. And uh, it makes us very, very happy without uh, giving any form of instructions for the players to be able to give each other technical, tactical support and, and uh, particularly at half time. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people see me speaking to the bench a lot during the matches and sometimes I convey certain messages where I would like, we don't have enough time at half time, so there are certain instructions that maybe I want to, to give to Modao, but I've got to ask Tapelo to relay that message at half time when he walks with him into the tunnel. I've got to ask Lyle to speak to, to Aubrey Modiba about certain things and, and sometimes even the message when it comes from a fellow teammate, a brother, uh, sits a little bit softer on the heart than when it comes from the coaches. And um, But overall, I think, uh, and this is what I say even about the new players that come in, they have a, have a clear responsibility to understand how the dynamics work in our, in our team and uh, the culture of, of being selfless and, and trying to put the team ahead of your own individual interests. 
Thank you, Coach Tsepo. Afternoon, Coach. Afternoon, Tsepo. Um, I remember you put your coach said that um, usually you can get four or five games to see how the team shapes up. Mm. On game number five now, especially with the new mm. are, are you satisfied with how the, the team is doing, especially with the fact that you are prepared for another clean sweep in the season? Mm -hmm. Your, your, your words, not mine. Uh, but um, look, look, the, the, we, we were in pre-season and uh, we're always thinking about ways to improve the team and to improve the squad. Fortunately, on, on TV during the off-season, we had a lot of yesteryear games. I don't know if you remember, there was uh, World Cup matches being played and... and and then there was, um, you can call it a, an aha moment, or you can call it a, a, a der, you know, the der moment, you know, that moment where you, you see things are looking at you, but you haven't seen them before. And you, you watch these games, and, and, and then you're thinking about where football might go, because like the evolution of society, and you see it even in fashion, for an example, how society evolves all the time, but with its involve evolution comes the the comebacks. For an example, now in society, a lot of baggy jeans are coming back. A couple of years ago, it was was extremely unfashionable to wear baggy clothes. Uh, but the same can be said with football. There were a lot of things that a couple of years ago were extremely unfashionable to do. Uh, you're going to call that modern football or the trends of, 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 of football, but the evolution of society always represents the evolution of football because football is a microscopic reflection of society. And then we, we, had to, we had that moment where we saw so many of these games and there was something that was a common trend in, in a couple of years ago and we had to think about how could we make Sundowns better and we had to make that decision because the other teams are getting better uh, and you watch the, f the, the games, you watch the teams uh, in the league, the standard from a, from a technical, tactical perspective has really, really uh, come to a different level and we could not stay with where we were and that being from a, from a improving from a personnel, improving from training methodologies and also improving from uh, tactical schemes and some form of um, application of, I won't call it new, but, but, but a different way of, of, of setting ourselves up on the pitch. And we had to make that decision, you know, uh, but it was a very difficult decision because a lot of people would look at the team and say, what, why fix something that is not broken? But to try to stimulate progress and challenge our players, we knew we couldn't sit in a space of comfort. And uh, that then means that when we start the season, we don't start with the momentum of last season because we've, we've, we've tried to bring in new things and shake the squad up a little bit and, 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 and try to evolve and make ourselves less predictable. And, um, but at the end, we are relatively very satisfied with where we are. Uh, we, we know we can play better, we know that we can do better and we will do better. Uh, it's just a matter of time. But the reality is that we, we feel we are on the right track and uh, the players need also, they need a little bit of time. And then, and then there's many other factors including uh, the induction of new players and when they've come in, uh, a lot of our new players didn't do pre-season with us and now they've got to be inducted in how we play and uh, yesterday if you saw when we brought Marcelo Allende onto the pitch we changed the formation completely because we've only had maybe one week to train with Marcelo in this system but we needed we needed familiarity uh, comfort on the pitch because that's our job we want to try to make sure that the players are comfortable on the pitch and then we played a formation that we felt that he was a little bit better accustomed to. That meant moving Tapelo somewhere else. That meant moving Sipombule somewhere else and, and Debza somewhere else. And then um, 
and then and then we 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 looked we looked uh, also still very very comfortable because that's a scheme that or formation that we've used in the previous seasons you know so so most of the other players are are accustomed to it but we we work very hard for for our players to support them and to try and make sure that we create a structure that is um very comfortable for them on the pitch a structure that is not going to give the opposition a lot of chances and a structure that is going to allow us to create a lot of chances that's 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 our focal point and at the end of the day uh that takes time you know that's coaching and that takes time uh but sundowns being sundowns there is no time to 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 request for time you've got to while you are working you've got to try to produce the results which is very very difficult because it's like being in the kitchen and you are cooking but at the same time you want to dish up you know so you know you've got to keep cooking you know and and trying to make sure that the people are patient before they fi- they they get the they get served with the finished product okay we're wrapping up now uh, last few questions you can go uh, I guess it's in the session sure <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think they place me last because if I'm first then everybody else is going to be a bit late. So yeah, yeah. Shubs, Shubs put it nicely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, coach, um, your former colleague, uh, Coach Peter, um, used to say Sundowns is running its own race. Um, what do you think about this? And I'm, I'm not sure if it's questions Esperance. Uh, we just, just check if your mic is on. Yeah, it's on. Is it on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can't. Can, 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 can. okay. um, uh, Tipima Zembe is, is going through the same. Um, in, in relation to, to, to the squad, um, with, with Sundowns, we know that um, your, your race is not just limited here. Yeah? You are a top eight team, sometimes top four. Uh, on, on the continent, but how, how do you balance this um, with, in terms of your squad? Um, because most of the time you sign Bafara players locally, um, and, and recently a high ranking official at, um, at the FA went as far as saying um, maybe the issue of squad camp has to be introduced, you know, um, in relation to some of the players, maybe one of really getting um, game time in Sundowns. Um, so how, how do you balance this? Um, because I, I think even with the chance squad that's playing this weekend, it's going to constitute mainly some of your players who are not playing. Well, I think uh, if you look at the, the football from a holistic and maybe from a global perspective, uh, that responsibility not just of balancing the squad but also of of trying to having the responsibility of carrying the technical bl- blueprint for the country that that responsibility always falls on the big clubs you go to spain madrid barca they they carry that blueprint they've got the responsibility to win champions league and compete for the country and represent the country at that space you go to england where okay now it's a bit it's changed a little bit but uh, historically man united arsenal at the moment manchester city for sure and uh, and liverpool you know these are the, the 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 clubs that have that responsibility holland is the same with ajax you go to to france now the same you go to italy juventus uh, the resurgence of ac milan also puts you in that space inter milan in that space so it's not a it's not foreign territory it's a, it's the responsibility that falls on the big clubs and then when you accept the the blessing and, and and the privilege of being at a big club you also welcome the burden of having to represent not just that the the, the club but the country in that space and also then you have to know that you you have to have the best players and sometimes sometimes the best players even at at the highest level uh, there was a time when spain constituted of 70% uh, barcelona players and that team went on to to not just uh, dominate european and world football but if you could see from a playing perspective the 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 telepathy the cohesion that they had because the players were playing with each other every single day and living with each other and they had the best players in spanish players 
uh, at Barca. So that blueprint is something that has been we've been all been exposed to. It's nothing new in football, and we've just got that responsibility to try to make do with 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 that 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 responsibility at uh, at Sundowns too. Thank you, Coach Diseto. Thank you very much. Uh, Coach, you are playing at a stadium and you are not really used to touch the stadium. Does that impact on the way you play or does that impact on the team in the game? No, we thanks to said so. No, we actually happy to play there. Uh, we happy to play there for for the direction that the club is taking, the from a commercial and a marketing perspective. And again, I don't want to go too much into that space. But uh, if you look at the average age of the average Sundown supporter, you will see that um, many of them fall into that age category of of scholars and and high tertiary tertiary education sort of uh, uh, citizens or or people within that social bracket and therefore bringing that game to them uh, allowing them to 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 be within walking distance of the stadium making sure that they also get to witness and get a taste of of of, of watching their favorite club play is something that I think is a master stroke from the club and and um, we are just very happy because also the f the field is relatively very very good. The surface of the pitch is, is relatively very very good. Colin, coach, um, Colin asked Joseph. Colin, thank you. It seems to be easy to follow sundowns and the way we play. <coughs> what are the main contributes, especially that we have a history of the development side of. Uh, I'm going to answer the first one because I think it's relatively very easy on or the second one rather it's very relatively very easy because one of the most important things that we try to get across is to try to profile the human being and that's why uh, even even when we uh, we have to say goodbye to players it becomes very very difficult because there becomes an emotional attachment to the human being the 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 personalities of people like Pavolso Franco for an example uh, before he comes we already do a background check on the character and the person that he is and then of course because he's a good human being and he's a good person you you get emotionally attached to 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 the person uh, before you even have uh, some form of understanding of the football player that he is and therefore that allows us to 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 it makes it a lot easier for the players to be inducted into the squad because not only are they good people coming into a squad of very, very good people, uh, but also there's a responsibility that they have because they are good football players that just so happen to be good human beings. And I don't have to say this and try to protect them or try to glow them up. You see it when Nasir scores his first goal. You see the re reaction from the bench. Everybody, everybody stands up, runs to the corner flag and celebrates. Marcelo Allende, first game, a couple of training sessions already. But because of his his personality, his ability to 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 allow himself to to settle and be feel welcomed into the squad allows allows people to celebrate uh, each other's successes as if they were their own and then it comes back to this uh, this profiling that I spoke about where one of the most important questions we ask now is what type of human being is he? What type of person is he? Uh, because we already expect that our scouts will always pull out the best players uh, probably within the database uh, so, so we know that by just mere having to look at the players and watching videos and trying to make decisions on whether we can recruit the player into the club, we first have to know un and understand what type of human being the person is. And um, that helps with, with the orientation because then it's just a, it's just a social and a, and a, and a, 
and a natural process instead of it being artificially created by the coaches, you know, and and then that that allows there to be some form of emotional connotations and, and that emotional glue which is based on trust because when you are a good person it means you carry good values and those values are honesty and integrity and, and this is a squad of very honest people. And then when you have that, then you have a lot of trust and 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 uh, Jose Mourinho once said, you only go to war with those you trust and, and that's why we are prepared to fight for each other and go to war over 90 minutes with each other or for each other. Coach, are you happy if I take two more? The time is up. Time is up to are you. you. I'm all right. Shopi, we're good. Thank you. Uh, let's, go, let's go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> and it had to be my Shatsi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Coach, um, I see that is allegedly unsettled in Cairo. Um, would there be an appetite of bringing him back home if that opportunity arises? And uh, also, he's unsettled. Allegedly. Oh. Uh, and, um, oh, he's not? Whatever he is. Uh, uh, and also, um, what are you guys planning for the December uh, window period during the World Cup? Uh, <laughs> the easier one. They no. Well, I don't know much about Percy being unsettled. Uh, incredible human being, also. Uh, top, top, top kid, uh, and very good football player. I don't know whether he's unsettled. I can't speak about him because I, I don't think officially Al Ahli have made a statement on Percy, and therefore because he's not, he's not a free player or free agent, and because also he belongs to a club that we've got huge respect for, becomes very very difficult to comment. But you want to ask me about the the person? I think you know. You want to ask me about uh, the footballer? I think you know my opinion. Uh, but I. I'd refrain from speaking about Percy because he's, he's, he belongs to another club. What we expect to be doing, we will give the players two weeks off. Uh, the plan is to give the players two weeks off immediately after the 12th, which is the culling, is the culling uh, Black Label uh, competition now. Uh, on the 12th and the 13th, we've got uh, two weeks for the players. Then we come back for two weeks and then hopefully we can get ourselves participating in some form of uh, tour. Uh, we are trying to confirm whether that will be in Africa or in Europe. Um, but we are we we will have something like that where we 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 participate in some very high profile games and try to to keep the level because there's a very important game on the 31st and and so there will be a lot of work to be done it's not a it's not a it won't be too much of festive for us all right uh, <coughs> you are away from Kasi FM yes uh, <coughs> that's Eric uh, Eric yes uh, yes sure Eric uh, I just want to know uh, about Bogani uh, when can we expect to see him uh, getting uh, time and uh, having assessed him? Do you think is he still fitting on the Santos uh, style of play? For sure, Bongs is, a, as I said before, Bongs is an hu incredible human being, very honest, sometimes maybe too honest. <laughs> But very, very honest human being, uh, great intellectual, uh, incredible intelligence and understanding. Particularly now, he comes back and you, you have, you have chats with him about football. You get the understanding that he's he's far more experienced. He he sees things even prior to them happening on the pitch. Uh, it's unfortunate that some of the friendlies we play behind closed doors, but if you had the liberty or the, the privilege or the opportunity or whichever way we want to look at it, you could have seen Bongs play in the friendly yesterday. Uh, so he, he participated for 30 minutes in the friendly. Uh, and then when you think about it from a scientific perspective where you gradually build from 30 to, to 45 minutes from, from a a chronic load perspective to maybe even 60 minutes and then hopefully by that time we feel that he can participate in, in, in the match. So a couple of friendlies to go for Bongs. Uh, 
and to build match fitness and uh, because unfortunately he didn't participate in preseason but but uh, he comes as I said or even before he comes into a space where there's already uh, one of the best midfielders last season in Andile Jali, one of the the most consistent performers this season in uh, in Tebo uh, Homokwena who for me yesterday was probably should have been man of the match. I watched the game again to this morning. I see Debza sprinting back on a counter-attack in the 84th minute, 33 seconds, I think. He is running his socks off to come back and, 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 and regain his position in the midfield. Um, so, you know, the, it's not going to be very, very easy for Bongs. First is to be in a competition, in a space to compete for a position. And then to be able to 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 play, so it's still the process of getting ready to to compete, and then and then wait for his his opportunity because there's there's a lot of Sipombule yesterday was outstanding when he came on, played as an eight, and then and then uh, we asked him to drop a little bit more to 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 help us establish the build up, and sometimes he connected as a six, and. Uh, very long since I've seen a six that is so press resistant. Not he's not a six, but I'm saying in that position, you know, when when he received, he's got this ability to to scan already and know which side you are coming from, and then he's got the clutch control that allows him to escape the pressure and put his body. It's unbelievable. I, that thing is that's not coaching. That's that's quality. That's individual quality. Sipo, Sipo did that three or four times when Stellenbosch looked to press us. A oh, very good pressing team. And uh, and um, we got a little bit more control with the build-up. Uh, but you still have uh, Mabue out. You still have uh, Savreda who can also play as an eight in that space. Uh, you still have Pizzo who was exceptional. Exceptional, exceptional, exceptional against Sikukune. And unfortunately missed the game yesterday because of flu, a bout of flu. Uh, so Mtobi Mvala is waiting also in that space. Mtobi was excellent for us last season when we, we, we needed his aggression, his physicality, and uh, he gives us a different profile in that space, but but a player that can play in the same position as Bongani Nizungu. So it's not, it's not going to be easy for Bongs, and he knows that. We've had that discussion already. Uh, but he, Bongs is an immaculate professional, a great human being, and I'm sure he's, he's itching to get himself uh, playing and representing Sundowns, like I'm sure a lot of Sundowns fans are also waiting to, with bated breath to, to see him on the pitch. All right, uh, thank you very much, Coach. We're going to have to end it here. All the best for Sunday. Thank you so much, Fatu. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Safe travels.